differential analysis, make or buy a component. Companies must sometimes decide whether it is cheaper to buy a component or to make it themselves. In order to be able to calculate the effect of either decision and compare, we must look at what are the relevant costs associated with making the component. Let's look at some data. We have manufacturing data on a per unit basis. We have this information for the variable expenses associated with making this part, specifically direct materials, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead. Additionally, we have some total fixed costs, 180,000 of tra traceable fixed manufacturing overhead and 135,000 of common fixed manufacturing overhead. One third of the traceable fixed manufacturing overhead is avoidable if the company purchases the part. So two thirds of this is unavoidable. So two thirds of 180,000 will continue whether the company makes the part or buys the part. So only one third of it is relevant and what we should consider when we're talking about how much is it going to cost for us to make this part. The above production data reflects manufacturing 60,000 units. So in order to compare, let's take the price that we could get from an outside vendor of $10 per part, multiply it by the 60,000 parts we expect to need, and that will yield a total of $600,000. Now, how much does it cost us to make that part internally? What are the costs truly associated with making the part? Well, of course, it's going to be the direct materials of $4 per part plus the direct labor expenses of $2.75 per part as well as the variable, variable manufacturing overhead of $0.50 cents per part. So we're going to multiply each one of those by 60000 and then we're going to associate with making the part the one-third avoidable or relevant costs of the traceable fixed manufacturing overhead. So this is a part that this is a portion of those traceable fixed manufacturing overhead part I'm sorry, price costs that are truly associated with making this product, making this component. And so we find that in order for us to make the product, it's going to cost us $495,000. In comparison to what it would cost to purchase the product, we can see that it would be cheaper to make the product. Now let's add some other factors in. The idle facility that will come about as a result of no longer making the, the part can be rented or a new product produced. So now we have a use for the idle portion of our facility that would be freed up if we wind up buying the part from an outside vendor. So we have the same information and data as before. We're buying it from an outside vendor at $10 per part. 60,000 parts is going to cost us 600,000. Additionally, we have the same information here and it's still going to cost us 495,000 in order to make the part. But in looking at what it would cost us to buy the part, we can offset those expenses by the revenue that we expect to gain from renting out that portion of the facility freed up or by using it to produce a new product. This is still, this, this analysis lets us still know that it's going to cost us more to buy it than it would be for us to make it. However, if our ability to rent the facility yielded 150000 as opposed to 50000 now it would be cheaper to buy the part rather than make it. So our decision in this instance would be to buy the part unless there is some reason that we would want to continue to make the part in order to keep our people um, active in lull times when there's a seasonal um, aspect to the products that we're making. So if there are times when we would normally be idle in the facility and we make these parts during that time, the fact that we can keep our people occupied and keep them engaged and with us, we may want to consider for the $45,000 difference, it may be worth it for us to continue to make the part.